fat on the body leads to shorter lifespans. And the more fattening foods you eat, the harder it is to lose weight. If you're putting 500 calories of oil on your diet, it's hard to lose weight. Because oil, any type of oil, is a high caloric rush food, which means the calories into the bloodstream very rapidly. And the body doesn't tolerate hundreds of calories in the bloodstream. It has to try to get it out by storing it as fat. You can't store fat and remove fat simultaneously. Now, when you have nuts as a source of fat instead of oil, then the calories in the bloodstream very, very slowly. And the body can preferentially burn them with energy, and they're very satiating. Generally speaking, oil is more fattening than an equal amount of nuts because the nuts lose part of the calories in digestion because they bind fat and pull fiber out into the stool. So 200 calories of oil puts 200 calories on your body. 200 calories of nuts, you burn it and you satiate it and it doesn't, to, it doesn't turn into body fat. That's been studied in more than 50 different studies. 50 separate studies show that eating nuts is not fattening compared to oil. And sure, olive oil is a good food compared to what oil you're comparing it to. It's a great food for longevity compared to butter and men animal fats and fried foods and other bad, other worse oils. And that's what the Prevenbit study showed. It showed that people who used olive oil, were, take, were given extra virgin olive oil to take home with them, reduced cardiovascular death by 15% which is good, better than other fats they were using. Even maybe better than having no fat in your diet. Because you need some fat in your diet, and olive oil is a pretty good, decent fat compared to other fats that you might choose to use. But when they compared olive oil to nuts and seeds, like walnuts or almonds or you know, pistachio nuts, you dropped cardiovascular death another 20-30% down. It was better than the oil, even though oil is better than the other choices they were making. So the point I'm making here is that, let's say you're on a plant-based diet to live longer. Are you denying that we should that we have protein needs and that when you eat that the in proportion to use oil as a percent of calories if a quarter of my diet comes from oil there's no protein in that if i took that 500 calories out of my diet and i put 500 calories in from nuts and seeds the diet is isocaloric same amount of calories but the nuts and seeds just gave me 15 to 20 grams of protein and then oil gave me none so i just stripped took stripped 20 cal 20 grams of protein out of my diet from using oil instead of nuts and seeds. Two diets isocalorically, you're always gonna get leaner bodies, more less aging phenomenon, more muscle mass with aging, and particularly, there's no food that has been shown to reduce cardiovascular death as much as eating nuts and seeds as a source of fat. So we have more than, I'd say there's probably a thousand studies on this issue. We can talk about the studies that are highly corroborative, that all the studies show the same thing, that when nuts and seeds are used as your primary source of fat, cardiovascular death drops by more than 40%. That's just from that one change. Not only you can still be eating meat or cheese or doing whatever it is, just adding nuts and seeds to the diet drops cardiovascular risk. Among vegan populations in the Seventh-day Advent Health Study 2, or near vegan populations, the longest lived and the lowest rate of cardiovascular deaths were those plant eaters utilizing nuts and seeds as a source of fat over people who were on an extremely low fat diet, not eating any source of fat. Even the flexitarians who ate animal products, who ate nuts and seeds, lived longer than the vegans who did not, did not eat nuts and seeds. Is that any nuts and seeds? It's, the studies show any nuts and seeds. Yeah. But we, not, we know that we've taken it to another level of, of excellence because we know that the heart, the stability of the heart against atrial fibrillation or cardiac arrhythmia is dependent on the exposure to ALA, which is a short-chain omega-3 fatty acid. And there are five nuts and seeds that contain adequate ALA. And those are, those, so we try to have half our nut and seed intake be from these high ALA-containing foods. And by the way, in the PrevMed study where they gave people olive oil, the longest of people were people who had nuts and seeds as a baseline, who were randomized to the group that was told to eat nuts and seeds, not the people who were randomized to use olive oil. So olive oil is better than other sources of fat, but not better than nuts and seeds. So these people, you know, olive oils are a big marketing industry, billion dollar industry, and they're very successful, have brainwashed our population to think olive oil is a health food. And it is relatively healthy compared to other foods people could choose. It's certainly one of the worst things they could use, right? You said there was five types that were high in ALA? Yeah. Four seeds, hemp seeds, chia seeds, flax seeds, and pumpkin seeds, and one nut, walnut. Those are high in ALA, or alpha-linolenic acid. That's a high omega-3 fatty acid. And it's good to have that exposure every day. You don't get that from olive oil. That stabilizes the heart and gives it an increase of longevity. And shown in study after study after study to reduce irregular heartbeat and reduce in the Physician's Health Study, a sudden cardiac death was reduced by 60%. In, in doctors eating just one ounce of nuts a day. There's no study that showed olive oil could do that. Olive oil is better than using canola oil and better using cottonseed oil and better than using sunflower oil, sure. It's better than using butter. It's better than using animal fats. It's a better choice if you want to put oil on your food. But this is the controversial statement I made. And it's, it's in a context. I'm saying that olive oil is a contributor to breast cancer because it's a contributor to obesity. And obesity is a risk factor for breast cancer. If you gain weight, if you're pouring oil on your food, you're not going to be able to lose weight. You have to reduce calories and you have to, and oil calories are particularly calorically dense and that caloric density drives overeating behavior and is addicting. It makes you want to eat more calories. 
It's like eating sugar as a, as a high caloric dense food too. It stimulates the brain to want to eat more food and gets you habituated to overeating calories. So these people who were angry with me and frustrated and a little bit irritated and want to strike back, olive oil is the best food in the world and you love that, it's just reflective of their addiction for concentrated calories that they don't want to have to give up their oils. They don't want to have to give up their sugar. They don't want to give up their honey, their maple syrup, their salt. Their, they just, people will just fight back with a fury over telling them they have to give something up. Eat whatever you want, you know. You don't have to give any of it up. It's just that we're talking here about putting together a nutritarian dietary portfolio to maximize you in lifespan, and that requires a low level of body fat. And you're going to have a hard trouble time getting your body fat that low when you're pouring oil on your food.